I'm Chris from Web Motorworks. Now, since the beginning of time, man's had this question. Does an electric car need a transmission? Well, I'm gonna answer that for you. It does sort of, but not really. And well, maybe it does, but anyways, let's get into it. So with the gas motor here, it's always gonna run at seven, 800 RPM. So you need some type of a system to be able to put it in gear, a clutch or some pulleys or something like that. And the other thing too, is they've got a certain power band that they work more efficiently in. So you want to be able to use gears to kind of stay within that power band. And so Ford has a six speed transmission on this and to keep the economy, you know, they, they try to get them to shift from first to sixth in around the 1500 to 2000 range so for the most efficiency. So one of the limitations of these gas motors is they redline around 5700 RPM, but you don't wanna be driving this thing 5700, you'll burn this motor out real fast, not to mention how much gas you'd be using. Whereas the electric motors I'm using, they wind up to 12,000 RPM and they're happy booting along at that. And their power band there, you know, is, is, is pretty level like their torque starts at zero rpm and, and goes across like this whereas the gas motor goes like this so you know that's one of the other difference between a gas motor and an electric motor and the need of a transmission obvious thing with an electric motor is they can turn it go into reverse just by changing the power on them whereas a gas motor of course it can't go in reverse it's you need a transmission to put it into reverse so with the gas car of course you're running at uh well we're doing a thousand rpm right now and we got to push the clutch in put it in first gear give it some gas rep the clutch let it out This is an electric car, it's called the Marathon 300. They were actually made in Canada. They made 600 of them in uh, 76 to 1980. And that was when uh, kind of everybody had the oil embargo and we thought we were running out of oil. So electric car was the way to go. So these were actually um, made out of Pinto parts. So it has a Pinto four speed transmission. They're synchro mesh. And the funny thing is, this has an accelerator. It has a brake and there's no clutch on this thing. So you just, first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. And the funny thing about electric motors is you put it in first, you don't have to put a clutch in anyways because the motor's not spinning. And then as soon as you give it gas, away you go. I'll demonstrate that in the old haze over here. The electric truck, we fire it up. We're in neutral right now. We put it in second gear. You notice I didn't use my clutch. And when I want to go, we just give it gas. It's like an automatic. We want to stop, we put our foot on the brake. You don't have to use the clutch because you see the, the uh, motor just stops spinning over. It's at zero RPM right now. You want to go, you just give it some gas. It's really weird figuring that out. And when you come to a stop at the stoplight, you know, you're, you think, oh, I should put the clutch in, but you don't need to got a four-speed transmission and one of the reasons I've got that is this is a really he heavy truck it's uh, 5,000 pounds and it's a fairly low voltage motor it's only 96 volts um, 125 horsepower horsepower doesn't mean that much for electric cars but it's got 256 foot-pounds of torque at 1 rpm so with these low voltage dual 35 motors I had a couple of choices for what voltage I wanted to use so if I went 96 volts, I'd get around 250 foot-pounds of torque. That's that orange line there. But you can see it peaks at about 2,800 RPM, which isn't a lot. And 126 horsepower, not a lot of horsepower. 
If I went with the 144 volts, by increasing the voltage, you can see how the torque, the orange line, goes all the way up to 5,000 RPM before dropping off. But it's only 180 foot-pounds of torque, so that's 70 foot-pounds of torque less. Yes, it had a peak of 165 horsepower, but I don't really need the horsepower at 5,000 RPM. So I'm going to show you how I calculated what my top speed of around 60 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour would need to be and see if I could get that in the 2,800 RPM range. Okay, so we've chose the higher torque motor. It peaks out the high torque at about 2,800 RPM. Obviously, the motor still goes 5,000, 6,000 RPM, but the torque starts dropping off. So what I want to know is, will this transmission and this gear ratio get me 70 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour? I don't want to go much faster than that in this old turd. Anyway, so when you went to school, grade two, you probably learned 5,280 feet in a mile and that's 63,360 inches in a mile. And now we know this is 108 inches around, so we divide that into it, and it's gonna be five, this will turn 587 times in one mile. Now, 60 miles an hour, you know there's 60 minutes in an hour, so exactly one mile in one minute. So that's 587 RPM. And then we multiply that by our gear ratio, which is 4.1, because remember it cancels out the transmission in fourth gear is one to one. So 587 times 4.1 is 2,467 RPM. That's what this motor is gonna be doing at 60 miles an hour. And we know our torque peaks out at about 2,800, so we're good 70, 80 miles an hour if we want. So that's how you do that calculation. So it's actually running right now. It's a little bit quieter than the MG. So I can start this in first gear. Now the gear ratio with this transmission in first gear is six to one and four to one. So that's like 24 to one. So if I start out in first gear, you know, I'm gonna take off. It's gonna have a lot of power, but the thing is I'm not gonna have a high, high end on it. You know what I mean? Like I can't do hundred miles an hour on it. It's neutral. That's, this isn't a synchro mesh transmission. So there's first gear. first gear it takes off pretty good but I could actually take off in fourth gear in this thing but it's gonna be kind of like a snail there's fourth gear <laughs> a little different than the other gear. Well, I also have a reverse in this just because I've got a transmission anyways um, second gear in this is actually pretty good starting out in it's got quite a bit of power So you can see in this truck, uh, electric cars with a lower voltage motor like the Volkswagen stuff, you know, it is important to have a four speed transmission in them. Um, once you get into the higher voltage, higher revving cars, um, you know, you can get like a Tesla gets 20,000 RPM out of their motor. So really you could get away with one gear even though a Tesla actually has two different gears because they have a motor in the front, a motor in the back with different gear ratios. And they got a computer that fluctuates between the RPM of the motor for taking off fast and slowing down. So ideally so what the um, car manufacturers usually do, they end up with around a nine to one gear ratio on the rear end. The problem with that is when you're accelerating off the line, you know, it's pretty good, but it's not like, whoa, really great. And then when you're going on the highway, your motor's revving over fairly high, which like I say, with a high, uh, high voltage motor, not really a big deal. So ideally, I think if you had like a, let's say about a, you had a 12 to one gear ratio to start out and you know, you'd have pretty good performance off the line. And then once you get up to speed, you know, 50 miles an hour, bang it into a four to one gear ratio and now you've got your highway speeds and you can do your 150 miles an hour or whatever. So does an electric car need a transmission? Mm, no, but 
it does increase your performance. So the Porsche Taycan is the only production EV that actually uses a transmission. Now Tesla used one in their Roadster when they first started out, but that thing sucked. They had problems with it. So they ended up pulling those trannies out and just doing uh, one speed in those. I don't know if that answers your question, but what was the question again? Oh, I might convert this thing to electric, but it's automatic transmission. So can you use an automatic transmission? You can. One of the things is the motor has to keep spinning to keep the pump going. So as an electric motor, it doesn't spin. So you need a separate pump. Um, some of the more modern transmissions are electronically controlled. So you have to use uh, crank triggers. And, and so it is, it is a little bit trickier. And of course, an automatic transmission isn't as efficient as a standard transmission so generally speaking people who do the EV conversions they kind of steer away from the automatic and they're more use the standard is more common but yeah you can do it okay so I think we covered quite a bit of ground there but I'm just going to touch base on the three cars I took to SEMA so the Z28 Camaro we actually had a four speed in that and the reason we wanted that we wanted to kind of drag race that thing and kind of have fun you know, um, first gear was 2.2 through the Muncie 410 gears, so that works about a 9 to 1 ratio. And the torque on that thing is about 365, so that's 3,300 foot-pounds of torque right up to about 7, 8,000 RPM starting at zero. So that's pretty good. Even to 60 miles per hour, you know, you're doing about 6,300 RPM. So that thing is, uh, you know, you can shift it at about 8,000 RPM and, you know, we're going to do the quarter mile pretty good in that thing. The 32 Ford and the 57 Bel Air, we actually did this style like the Cyber Beast here where you actually have the motor and a gear reduction. So that's a 1.9 gear reduction. On the 32, we had a 410 gears, so that's about a 7.8 um, gear ratio. And on the Bel Air, it's more of a cruiser. It had 3.36 gears times 1.9. It ends up being about 6.4. So you can boot along on the highway and take your family and whatever. And uh, the 32, 60 miles an hour, will be running about... Uh, 5,000, 5,500 RPM. Um, so yeah, it's and, and it's it's a light car. It's probably weighs just over 2,000 pounds. It's like a rocket ship. It just takes off like you wouldn't believe. So in that case, we didn't really have. Well, the, you you call them a transmission. It's a gear reduction, but it's just one speed, and it's it's perfectly fine for those cars. But um, yeah. There you go. You kind of have to make your own decision there whether you want to have a transmission or, or not. But uh, gear reduction, yeah, it does the trick.